Okay, let's test what we've done. We have an Amazon spider, which is scraping the Amazon.com website for books about web scraping. Let's go. Pseudo scrapey crawl. Amazon underscore spider and just double check VPN is connected. Yep. Let's go. And it's very quick. It's because it's cached. Enable HTTP. Did I say three T's? I meant to. Cache. So we've got just go always go to E check for errors no errors so dropped dropped is good because that means our process underscore item method which we call in pipelines means it's worked so we've scraped 144 items we've dropped 85 and um, let's see what we're left with okay so quick chat about PHP MyAdmin, it's used to visualize MySQL databases. So if you're interested in seeing your data and you don't want to do it by the command line, then this is a great tool. Um, it's not specific to Python. You can uh, use it for any type of MySQL database outside of Python. So you may have seen LAMP or XAMP, and basically that stands for Linux and MySQL and PHP or the X version means cross-platform. Once you've installed that, plenty of info out there on how to do all that, then you can log in. PHP my admin. You can install this with relatively little effort. Instructions are out there, I won't go into it right now. So go, and um, yeah, Amazon DB was a, a previous attempt. So what we have here, is a table called AMZ books and we have 74 results now that's probably the I can't do the maths but items scraped minus items dropped should equal 74. This is a nice way of looking at the results. Uh, you can also sort, save if you're doing any SQL queries, uh, for instance if I want to sort them all by price, that's descending, let's do descending. We can see that the most expensive book is £864. Wow. Um, so yeah, We've run the spider and it saved all of the output into my SQL database, which is fantastic. So let's um, just go back and quickly look at the code. We've got the spider code, which follows on from the previous tutorials, including the SQL Lite one. Um, one thing I added here was this lambda function because <laughs> see there let me zoom in on that bit sorry okay I was attempting to insert the price into the database as a decimal so that I could sort it by <laughs> as you've just seen by price When I ran that, I was getting an error. It was because the dollar sign is not a decimal. So to get it working, I used Farcar, but that was not the correct way of doing it. So I came back into my spider code and I said, if there is a price, use this Lambda function where the value has the dollar removed from it 
and gets turned into a float. So that is a, it's not an integer, it's effectively a decimal. It's a decimal with a decimal point and some numbers after it. Um, price, clean price, so it's cleaned up the price, which is the lambda function. So price has basically been cleaned up. If we look at pipelines, import sys, I forget where I used that. There, I think, yeah. So it, it exits if the attempt to connect fails. So it clean, exits cleanly after showing an error message. Um, I'm using my SQL my sql dot connector and we try to if you look on the maria db website you'll find this example and basically try accept you can do this as a separate method which follows so you create your class within pipelines. You've got your init method, which attempts to create a connection and create a table. Create a connection is this. So this runs this, which runs this, which connects to your database. So that will connect to the database, but it won't connect to the tables. Because so what you need to do is you need to run the next function, which method, which drops this table if it exists Amazon but AMZ books if it already exists if it doesn't exist then you create it so I've done a primary key which it auto generates for the ID um, book title author star rating I could and should probably change that to a decimal at the moment it says four out of five star rating or something like that. So it's got text and numbers, integers. Price decimal, which I've just described. Cover image, which is a URL, so that's Varka. Um, so we've connected to the database We've dropped any existing table called AMZ books. We've created the table with these fields, which must match what we have in items. And obviously items must match what we have in the original spider because that is the name of the variables that correspond to the X paths that we extract from the web page. And then we process the item. So this is the conditional logic, which says if we've got a paperback then store it otherwise it's not a paperback drop it and then the important bit store into the db store underscore db my query so we've got we write a, we set a query as a variable and we set the values as a variable and then we say execute the query and pass the values to the query and then we execute it and then we commit it to the database and then finally we close our connection which is important because otherwise eventually you will run out of connections and it's just good practice to close the connection so i hope that has given you a brief overview all the code is on uh, github rggh and we've looked at pipelines Items we've already seen in previous videos, and yeah, nothing to see here. <laughs> the six variables which match the six variable names in our insert statement, because that is what we've collected from our spider using items here. Um, and what was the other file settings so settings 
three lines and you don't really write the code you just don't comment it so if we go here you can see line 85 HTTP cache enabled equals true so I'm, I'm not actually pulling any information down from Amazon it's already cached it locally um, yeah 66 to 68 item pipelines we just enable the pipelines and when we run scrapey you may remember that we saw right at the start we get so these are all your settings auto throttle name request request per IP download delay uh, thus getting it all from settings I've actually overridden download delay in the spider itself anyway you can see here enabled extensions auto throttle and we have this is the important bit in the context of this video amz.pipelines.amz pipeline enabled item pipelines now you want to be seeing something here inside these square brackets inside this list if you are means pipelines working and chances are you will be attempting at least to connect to your database and send information to it to store and um, Hmm. Yeah, warning dropped. Not a paperback book. Why is it not a paperback book? Because it's a Kindle format. So yeah, just verify that our process underscore item logic is working correctly, and it looks like it is. Lots and lots of Kindle versions, and I'm trying to find one that's not a Kindle. Wow. Uh, well, that's a hard cover at least. Um, wow. So many Kindle versions, aren't there? Anyway, we could look at this all day, which you will fall asleep, and so will I. So, um, I hope this has shown you an overview of modifying the spider to send data to a database rather than to a CSV. Why would you want to do that? You'd want to do that because you can query the SQL and also you can timestamp your, which is what we will move on to in the next video you can timestamp your entries into the database um, why would you want to do that because then you can do monitoring price monitoring um, you could for instance compare compare prices by day or by week and that's something which is quite useful Imagine trying to compare prices, the same price information for a particular book between seven separate CSV files. It's not really it's practical or even advisable, is it? So yeah, if you know a little bit of SQL, which even if you don't, it's very easy to find it and practice it and even just copy someone else's queries and then uh, yeah you can um, you can query by date or by day and then you can monitor the price fluctuation between the days of the week or the days of the month or whatever time period you wish and um, yeah there really aren't many paperback books here are there in fact where are they Unknown binding. K 
Kindle Edition. See, some are Kindle and some are Kindle Edition. I don't understand that, that's not really... Oh, maybe Kindle means it's only available on a Kindle and Kindle Edition means it's available on the Kindle and as a real book. Don't know, at the moment it's not relevant because we are just deciding to pick out the paperback books. Anyway, onwards and upwards, I'll see you soon.